this video is about operations with complex numbers. So not all quadratic equations have real number solutions. And here's an example of one. 2x squared plus 11 equals negative 13. To solve this equation, we can use square roots. And I'll subtract 11 from both sides. 2x squared equals negative 24. Divide both sides by 2. x squared equals negative 12. And for the first time, we're going to be trying to take the square root of both sides, but we have a negative number underneath the square root sign. So we'll be trying to take the positive and negative square root of negative 12. Because this is a not real number, we've invented a, a letter that stands for the square root of negative 1 so that we can continue going from here. We do not want to stop every time we get to a problem like this and say, it has no real solution. We want to actually be able to keep doing operations, so we want to continue simplifying and solving this answer. So what we've come up with is the square root of negative 1 represented with a symbol called i. And so these are called imaginary numbers. That's where the i comes from. So if the square root of negative 1 is i, then I can simplify this answer further by taking this square root of negative 12 and breaking it up into the square root of negative 1 and the square root of 12. Because the square root of 12 I know how to deal with. The square root of negative 1 is the thing that's causing me a problem. Since negative 1 has no square root, we're going to simply replace it with the letter i, which is a symbol that stands for root negative 1. And so here we can say x equals plus or minus i root 12. I know I can simplify that root 12 further, since now it's a positive square root of 12. So I'm going to simplify that square root of 12 by breaking it into square root of 4, square root of 3. And then all told, my final answer should look like this. The square root of 4 is 2, and that's going to go first, my real number. My imaginary right next to it, the square root of 3 at the end. And this is how we simplify a non-real answer to a quadratic equation. It's called an imaginary or a complex solution. So some properties of i. Now that we've discussed what i is, right? i is equal to the square root of negative 1. An important property to know about i is what is i squared? So if i is the square root of negative 1, we would agree that i squared means this times itself. We know from general square roots that the square root of anything times itself is going to equal the number underneath the square root, right? So the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 is equal to negative 1. So when you have i squared, it equals negative 1. And suddenly, it's not imaginary anymore. It becomes a real number again. If you have i to the third power, that's like saying the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. And since we just discussed that this here comes out to negative 1, simplify that. And this is still the square root of negative 1. It's true to say that i to the third equals negative the square root of negative 1. And we know that this is i. So it's true to say that i to the third power equals negative i. And then i to the fourth power. i to the fourth power means the square root of negative 1 multiplied by itself four times. And we just discussed that this is negative 1 and this is negative 1. So it is true to say that i to the fourth power equals positive 1. A complex number is a number that has a real part and an imaginary part. So a complex number, and in fact all numbers are complex numbers. If you think about the number um, 5, which all your life you've known as just a normal real number, you can actually write that as a complex number, 5 plus or minus 0i. It means the real part is 5, plus or minus no imaginary part at all. So plus or minus 0i. You'll see lots of complex numbers throughout the rest of this unit, throughout the rest of this quadratic chapter. Things like 2 plus or minus 3i. And sometimes there isn't a real part either, and so you'll just see it written as something like plus or minus 5i. We don't often show the zero that's in front of it, but it is there. All numbers are complex numbers. 
I'm sure we'll see some examples where the solution comes out to be a complex number. Doing operations with complex numbers is a lot like doing operations with the variable x instead of i. Mo many of the rules stay the same until you introduce i squared into it. But if you're just trying to add, like this one, two complex numbers together, it's just combining like terms. You're going to take this 11, the real part, and add the negative 4, which is 7. And you're going to take the negative 10i and add 3i for minus 7i. You always want to leave your final answer in standard form, which is real followed by imaginary. And in this case, it doesn't have a plus or minus. It's just minus 7i because that's the sign that it came out to based on the original numbers of the problem. And this next one, I'm going to simplify by distributing the minus sign. And there's a plus sign here. And I want to write my final answer in simplified standard form, so 27 minus 13. 14 and negative 4i plus i is minus 3i. And then this last one here, I'm distributing a 4i. So 4i times negative 5 is negative 20i. And 4i times i is positive 4i squared. So in all ways, we've treated it like an x. This is the first time where i is really treated as the value i, which is the square root of negative 1. Because we know that i is the square root of negative 1, we discussed that i squared, therefore, is negative 1. I have to simplify this answer that I just got further. I have to take this and change it to 4 times negative 1. Because i squared is a real number, not an imaginary number. I still have this imaginary part in front. I need to simplify this and write it in standard form, which means the real number needs to come first, followed by the imaginary part. And this is the complex number in standard form. So it only is different from x when you get an i squared or i to a power involved. Because i to any power is going to simplify differently than x to a power would. So this is a FOIL or a binomial distribution with i. You want to just follow the steps like we've always done. Distribute your 8 first. Distribute your negative 3. And then we need to simplify this down to be a complex number in standard form. I know that this is going to be rewritten as negative 21 times negative 1. And so that's becoming a real number. And that simplifies to just positive 21. I have a negative 32 out front for it to combine with. So I'm going to add the negative 32 and the positive 21 for a negative 11. And I'm going to add my two imaginary parts together, 56 and 12i, to make 68i. And there's the complex number in standard form. Because i is a square root, right, i stands for the square root of negative 1. I don't want you to ever forget that. If you have i in the denominator of a fraction, you have to rationalize it, just like you would if it was a square root in the denominator of a fraction cannot have i in the denominator of a fraction. So we get rid of it by multiplying by the conjugate of the denominator, just like we do if there was a square root down there. The numerator is going to get foiled and become slightly more complicated than it started. So 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times negative 4i. Negative 3i times 1. And negative 3i times 4i plus 12i squared. And the bottom is going to get foiled. 1 minus 4i plus 4i. Those will cancel out if they're conjugates of each other. And then negative 16i squared. Now we're going to simplify to write at the top and the bottom standard form. I know that this is becoming minus 12 because it's 12 times negative 1. And I had a 6 out front, so 6 minus 12 is negative 6. Combine my two imaginary terms together. My numerator now says that. In my denominator, 4i and the minus 4i cancel out. This becomes positive 16 because it's like a negative 16 times a negative 1. And I had a 1 down there, so I combine it to 17. Unless all three can be simplified, I'm not going to simplify that fraction. And so I'm going to leave it just like that. Second example, multiply by the conjugate of the denominator to get i out of the denominator. 15 plus 10i. There's nothing else to do on the top. It's becoming a complex number. And on the denominator, it's 9 plus 6i minus 6i. 
and then minus 4i squared. I know that this is going to become plus 4, and these cancel out. So this simplifies to 15 plus 10i to the standard form on the top, and 9 plus 4 is 13 on the denominator. And that is all.